we've done a bunch of examples looking at the actual molecular structure and trying to come up with a name. In this video, we'll go the other way around. We'll start with a name and see if we can actually draw the molecular structure of whatever this might be. So let's start. So when you first look at these, it's very daunting. But you always want to start really at the end, so you know what kind of the core of the structure is going to be. So if you look at the end of this, you have an ane, so there's not going to be any double or triple bonds here. It's all single bonds. It's a hexadex. It's a hexadecane. So let's think about that. Hexa. Deck. So hexadec, that's 6 and 10. Hexadec was a prefix for 16. So this is 16 single bonded, single bonded, bonded carbons, carbons, and cyclohexadexane. <laughs> Cyclo, cyclohexadecane. So 16 single bonded carbons in a ring. So this part of it right here, so let me just do so the cyclohexadecane, let's draw that part first. It's not easy to draw even a, a sixteen a sixteen carbon ring. So let's start here. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then 16. I think I got it. Let me count them again, and then I can connect them up in a cycle. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. All right, I drew the cyclohexadecane part. Now. If we go back a little, let's see, we have a 2,9-diisopropyl. So what, is a, what does this mean? This means that we have an isopropyl at the 2 and the 9 spot. Now, when you are drawing the structure from the name, you could just arbitrarily, on the some way saw this ring, pick what your 1 through your 16 spots are. So I'll just arbitrarily pick them. one Because I could have drawn this ring any which way. 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. All right, so this is this next piece right here. Let me do this in magenta. 2, 9, diisopropyl. This is telling us that at spots number 2 and at spot number 9, I have isopropyls. The di is just saying I have two isopropyls at 2 and 9. So you can kind of ignore the di. So I have an isopropyl, and you may or may not remember that an isopropyl looks like this. It's three carbons. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3. And the connection point to the main ring in this case is going to be in the middle carbon. So it kind of forms a Y. All of the isos, the isopropyl, isobutyl, they all look like Ys. So this is so it's going to be linked right over here. It's going to be linked right over there. And that's also going to happen at the ninth carbon. So the ninth carbon, we're going to have another isopropyl. We're going to have another isopropyl at the ninth carbon. All right, we've taken care of the 2, 9 isopropyl. Then we have the 6-ethyl, six 6-ethyl, six which is just a 2 carbon. Remember, meth is 1, eth is 2, prope is 3. So this is, let me write this down. So this is. So this is going to be, so prop is equal to 3. Isoprop is equal to that type of shape right over there. In this case, eth, eth is equal to 2. So it's a 6-ethyl group. So at 6, we have an ethyl group. So 1, 2 carbons. And it's connected at the 6 carbon on the 6 carbon on the main ring. And then finally, we have a cyclo pentyl cyclopentyl so if we look at let me find a color i haven't used yet let's see i've already used one of these here cyclopentyl so pent pent is 5 but it's 5 in a cycle so this is a 5 carbon ring that's branching off of the main ring and it's at the first it's at the first spot so let me draw a 5 carbon ring so pent is equal to 5 so it would look like this 1 2 3 Four, five. It looks just like a pentagon. That's a cyclopentyl group, and it's attached to the one carbon on my cyclohexadecane. So it is attached 
just like that. And we're done. We've drawn one cyclopentyl 6 ethyl 2 9 diisopropyl cyclohexadecane. Let's do another one. I think we're getting the hang of it. So here, here, maybe we could do this one a little bit faster. Let's see, we have a tetramethyl dodecane. So the main root here is the dodecane. Do for 2, dec for 10. This is a 12 carbon chain. It's not in a cycle, so let me just draw it out. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And so we can just number them arbitrarily, just because I could have drawn this any which way. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's the dodecane, all single bonds. And then we have a 3699 tetramethyl. And all, all this is telling us, all this, remember, meth is one carbon. So all this is telling us is at the 3, the 6, the 9, so at the 3, the 6, and twice at the 9 spot, we have methyl groups. And we have four methyl groups. That's all the tetramethyl is saying. So it's a little bit redundant. We know we have four of them here, 6, 3, 6, 9, 9. We have methyl groups at each of those places. So we have one methyl group at 3, and then that just that is bonded with the third carbon on the dodecane chain. We have one at 6, bonded to the 6 carbon on the dodecane chain. And then we have two at 9. So we have one that's one at 9, and then we have another one at 9, bonded to the 9 carbon on the dodecane chain. And we're done. That's it. That's 3699 tetramethyl dodecane. Let's do another one. 1,3-bis-1,1-dimethyl-ethyl-cyclopentane. So once again, just take kind of, you know, breathe slowly. It's, it, it, it's very daunting right when you look at it. But just start with kind of the core. Cyclopentane, that's just a simple five carbon ring. Five carbon ring, looks like a pentagon. One, two, three. Let me draw a little bit better. Three, four, five. Let me draw that. Five, there you go. That is a five carbon ring, and we can number it however we want. So one, two, three, four, and five. And this is telling us at the one and the three position, at the one and the three position, so at the one and three position, we have, and the bis is kind of redundant. This is saying we have two of these things. So obviously we have two. We have one at the one, one at the three. So you can kind of ignore the bis. That's just the convention, and we've seen that multiple times. But at each of those positions, we have a one, one dimethyl ethyl. So what's a dimethyl ethyl look like? So let's think about it a little bit. Let's think about it. Let me do it in orange. So this is going this is they obviously named it using systematic naming. And what we have here, we have an ethyl is kind of the core of this side chain. So if an ethyl ethyl is equal to two carbons, so this is two carbons right there. So let me draw a two carbon one, two. That is two carbons right over there. I'm just drawing it at the 3 spot. I'll draw it also at the 1 spot, actually. So that is two carbons right there. That's the ethyl part. And then on 1, 1, so if we number them, we number where it's connected. So it's 1, 2, 1, 2. This is saying 1, 1 dimethyl. So on this ethyl chain, you have two methyls. Remember, methyl is equal to 1. So this is one car. You have one carbon. That's what methyl is. But you have you have two of them. You have dimethyl. You have it twice at the one spot. So you have one methyl here, and then you have another methyl there. Same thing over here. You have one methyl on the one spot, and then you have another one methyl on the one spot. And then you are connected at positions one and positions three. So you're connected there, and you are connected right over there. And you're done. That's it. That is our structure. Now, if you did this with common naming, instead of this being, instead of this being this group being a 1, 1 dimethyl ethyl, you might see that, OK, we're connected to a group that has 1, 2, 3, 4 carbons in it. The carbon that we're connected to branches off to three other carbons. It is a tert butyl. So you could also call this a, you could also call this a 1, 3. Let me just write it down. So another name for this would be 1, 3, 1, 3, tert. Or sometimes people just write a T there. T butyl t butyl cyclo oh actually I should say di t butyl because we have two of them 1 3 di t butyl cyclopentane
cyclopentane. So that would be the common name. 